Okay, so let's get started with Illustrator. This is the name of the folder when we started this project, and this is the name of the file. So go ahead and use the copy and paste method so that when we've got our Illustrator file saved in our proper folder, which you can see right here, I've already created the Vector Graphics Project folder. We're going to save this file inside that folder, and we'll be backing that up. Right now we're backing up all three of these folders. They're all active right now doesn't really matter what version of Illustrator you have for this particular project. Uh, we should be able to do everything on any number of versions. They will all have a create new or start a new project, something that says new on it. And we're all going to use the web large preset. You can see that right here. So we're looking for the web large 1920 by 1080. It uh, just keeps us all standard, and a lot of what we do ends up in video, so we're all just going to keep that same size. makes it easier to combine work from different students. So look for your new button. It's a very popular one, so Web Large is there. We do have many different presets. You can find Web Large under the Web tab and look for 1920 by 1080. And we're going to change the name. You never want to have a file named Untitled or Document 1 or anything like that. So let me just delete that and paste it in and of course change this to your name. Everything else should stay the same. We're going to stay in the RGB color space because we intend to use these things in video. It's setting up the artboard right now, and I already have my workspace set to Essentials Classic. But before we do anything here, the first thing to do, of course, always save it. So File, Save As, always save it on your computer in the folder that you made for it that you're backing up every day. Just click Save, and whatever shows up on here, just click OK. Now this is a 1920 by 1080, so you can see I'm actually at about 50%. When we get started here, you want to make sure you're not zoomed in and thinking that that's the corner of our document. I'm using Control Plus and Control Minus to zoom in and out, but Control Zero will scale it to exactly the amount of space that you have, and I usually bring it down Control Minus one more. So this is our toolbar here. This is our panel bar over here. This is one of the most important ones, which shows what layers we're on. We're going to want to make sure and draw different things on different layers and name them correctly. This control bar up here is really, really important. And let me show you the different workspaces that are available, Windows Workspace. And we're on Essentials Classic. When you first get started, you may see something like this. Very stripped down, bare bones, lots of room for your drawings but not a lot of panels and everything open. So simply go to Window Workspace and change it to the classic view right here. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a line. So remember that many tools can live in the same spot. So if for some reason you don't see the line tool, then you can go looking for it by clicking and holding. Sometimes folks will decide they want a single toolbar and that can make it kind of hard to find if you're not used to that setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the intersection of a corner and we're going to click and drag because if you just click it says oh you want a line how long what direction and that's not the easiest way to draw a line. So we're going to go right here to this corner and we're going to let Illustrator help us find that center. Notice it's giving me some hints and leads me and it says center so I know that's the middle of my document. I'm going to draw lines from all four corners, but you do need to come from the corners. If I try and draw another line here, I'm actually moving the anchor point. A line has two anchor points, and it just fills in the line in between. I don't want you to try and put that back in the center. Go way off, and then use Control z and let the computer put it back. So let me quickly draw the rest of my lines from the intersections. It'll tell me when I'm right on the intersection of those two lines. 
and one more here from this corner. So now I've got four lines that meet in the middle. And so that's what's going to go on this layer. Let's take a look at that. The layer that starts off is layer one. Double click on it and call this one the X, just to make it very clear what is on that layer. And you can see that it's actually made up of four individual lines. This is called the target and you can actually select individual paths that are making up the X or you can select the entire X at once. If you've just got one thing selected, when we go up here to where the stroke is, stroke is the outline and weight is how thick it is. It's measured in points and I can increase the stroke of that line and it will thicken it. Now, I want to do all the lines at once. So I'm going to use my target here to select everything on that layer and do the same thing. Notice there's no number there. It's because we have a mix. So as soon as I start going up, it goes up, 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 and 15 to 20, somewhere in there, should work just fine. So we've got lines of a uniform width that meet in the very middle. And this is where that profile is. So the width profile doesn't have to be the same from one end to the other. It can change depending on which of these profiles you select. I want to see it going from large on one end to a point on the other. And that's an infinitely sharp point. If I were to use control plus and zoom in on that center section, you can see I've zoomed in 8,500% and it looks the same because it's just redrawing that line every time I zoom in. So that's one of the great advantages of vector artwork.